Good morning, my sister and brother, Berta. We're here trusting that you are doing well. So how are you today? How are you today? It's a beautiful day. So happy preparation day. Happy preparation day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The sun is not out yet, but nevertheless, it is a beautiful day. So before we get into our topic, let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Right now, Father God, I'm asking you to decrease me, Father God, so that you'll be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, the scripture reading is coming from Leviticus 25, verses 17. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 17. And it reads, Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Mm. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So before we get into our topic, let us go ahead and bow for prayer again. It says, God's grace needed to polish us. God's grace needed to polish us. Mm polish. Mm. So, you know, we have work to do, work to do. God's grace needed to polish us. Father God, as we go into this topic, Father God, I ask you to open our hearts and our mind to receive this information. I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Polish. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm polishing stuff, you know, you got to put some hard work. You got to put some pressure in there, right? So it says here, but that's my daughter. So let me go back. It says, you are in danger of making grave mistakes in your business transaction. God wants you to be on your guard, lest you indulge in a spirit of crowding one another. Be careful not to cultivate the sharper tact, for this will not stand the test of the day of God. Shrewdness and close calculation are needed. For you have all classes to deal with. But, 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 let not these straits become a ruling power. Under proper control, they are essential elements in the character. And if you keep the fear of God before you and his love in the heart, you will be safe. Let me read that. Under proper control... There are essential elements in the character. And if you keep the fear of God before you and his love in the heart, you will be safe. It is far better to yield some advantage that might be gained than to cultivate a, a vivarious, meaning a greedy or a materialistic spirit and thus make it a law of nature. Petty sharpness is unworthy of a Christian character. Petty sharpness is unworthy of a Christian. We have been separated from the world by the great clever of truth. Our wrong traits of character are not always visible to ourselves. Hey, Earl, how are you, my brother? Trusting that you are doing well. It was great seeing you this past weekend. It was great seeing you. Your beautiful smile. Thank you so much. It says here, our wrong traits of character are always visible to ourselves, although they may be very apparent to others. But time and circumstances will surely prove us and bring a light and bring to light the goal of character or discover the baser material. Every base taught, every base taught, every wrong action reveals some defect in the character. The rugged trait must be brought under the chisel. The rugged trait must be brought under the chisel and the hammer in God's great workshop. And the grace of God must smooth and polish before we can be fitted for a place in the glorious temple. Mm. 
And you know, actually, you know what a chisel is? It's like a, a long tool, you know, like if you're doing woodwork, you know, a chisel, you have a chisel and you normally have a hammer trying to take off the rough, rough edges, whatever, whatever, um, woodwork that you're doing, right? So God has stayed here. These rugged traits must be brought under the chisel and the hammer in God's great wor workshop. And the grace of God must smooth and polish before we, for we can be fitted for a place in the glorious temple. God can make these rulers in our church institution. God can make these rulers in our church institution more precious than fine gold, even the golden edge of offer. If they will yield themselves to his transforming hand, they should be determined to make the noblest use of every faculty and every opportunity. The word of God should be their studies and their guide in deciding what is the highest and the best in all cases. The weakest followers of Christ have entered into alliance an, inf an infinite power. The weakest follower of Christ had entered into alliance with the infinite power. In many cases, God can do little with men and women of learning because they feel no need of leaning upon him who is the source of all wisdom. Therefore, after a trial, he sets them aside for a people of inferior talents who have learned to rely upon him whose souls are fortified by the goodness truth and unwavering fidelity and who will not stoop to anything that will leave a stain upon the conscience Ooh, that was a mouthful right let me repeat this let me repeat this let me repeat it for those in the back of the room those in the middle of the room and those in the front of the room. Oh, and also those outside of the room. You know, we got different people that goes to church and they do different things, right? We got some that hang outside the church, right? We got some that's in the, that goes inside, but they're in the, you know, just going around in circles. Then you got those that's sitting, right, inside the church, in the middle of the church, in the back of the church, and some in the front of the church, but they're still not getting the message, why? Because they have different motive, different alternative, different things are going on in their mind. I don't know. Sometimes I find myself, it's like, if I'm not sitting like up in the front, I get very, I get distracted easily. You know, this one's doing this, this one moving here, this one has to go out. It's like, mm, I tell you, we need more reverence in the church of God. I tell you, it should be more reverent. Well, let me read this to your hearing. It says, the weakest follower of Christ has entered into alliance with the inf infinite power. In many cases, God do God can do little with men and women of learning because they feel no need of leaning upon him who is the source of all wisdom. Therefore, after a trial, he sets them aside for people of inferior talent who have learned to rely upon him whose souls are fortified by goodness, truth, and unwavering fidelity. And who will not stoop to anything that will leave a stain upon the conscience? Ooh, thank you, Father. So that concludes my devotion, my sister and brother. God's grace needed to polish us. God's grace needed to polish us. I hope, my sister and brother, that you are allowing the Lord to polish you. My brother, I hope you are learning, hoping that you are relying on God to polish you and giving permission to polish you. I went yesterday to um, there's um, a factory um, not too far, and they they process oranges, oranges, right, orange. And so as they as the the belt is going, you know, the, the the fruits are coming in, the fruits are coming in, and then they got these one these women and they're picking. This one's no good. This one here. This one is this. This one, and they're picking, 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 sorting, sorting. So that's what God is doing. He's sorting. Each and every one of us, my sister and brother, it's a sorting process. Not everyone is qualified for heaven. 
everyone has the has the how would you say everyone has the opportunity but a lot of people will not surrender do that mean do that want to surrender do that want to change because if she see a spot or uh maybe like there's an orange that is not uh ripe right you know when they pick the orange sometimes they pick them too early right so as she goes into and they see a spot here and maybe this one here is too small put this one here and this one here and this one's here and sometimes people like like you said people have learned i've learned people that got all these degrees they say well i have everything i don't need anything there's nothing for me to change and my sister my brother it doesn't matter whether what degree we have or don't have degrees we all need to be changed in the likeness of god so we all he has work for us to do and he has work to do on us <laughs> right he has work to do on us because he sees something in us that is not like him so he has to use the chisel and the hammer to hammer those rough edges away right and it doesn't happen overnight that's why when we come into say god says come as you are right but when we come to God as we are, we do not stay as we are because he, sh you should have allowed him to do the, use the chisel and the hammer to, to, um, to straighten those rough edges or to knock off those rough, rough edges. And if we are not allowing him to transform us into his character, then we are, you and you, we are wasting time, my sister and brother. And some people know that they're not doing right, but they still stay I'm okay, and my sister and brother, all of us has work to do. All of us have to be transformed into his likeness, not my likeness, but his likeness. So my, my prayer is that we will surrender our life and allow the Holy Spirit to take full control. Allow him to change us, my sister and brother. Just surrender your life to him. It's amazing. We only got, he promised, me, promised us three score and ten. That's 70 years. And you talk about 70 years compared to eternity? That is nothing. 70 years is nothing. It's almost like you are a baby, a baby. Can you imagine a baby compared to eternity, my sister and brother? So let us allow the Holy Spirit to, to mold us, to shape us. And as God is using his chisel to take off all the rough evidence, Allow us to be, to be transformed, my sister, brother. Just surrender our life to the Lord and allow Him to take full control. And so when we're thinking that, well, you know what? I'm just planning on giving up. My sister, brother, you came too far to do that. God has brought you from a mighty long way. Back in the day, there was a song like that. God brought you from a mighty long way. Why would you give up now? You're almost there. Just continue the Christian journey. It's not easy and it's not going to be easy. Okay, it's not an easy thing. It's not like I'm walking in the park and I'm the smelling on the rose. And if you if you picking up a rose, you got to be very mindful, right? Because there might be a bug in there while you're smelling this rose. There might be a bug in there. And also, when you're picking up the rose, there might be torn on the rose bush, right? So you still have to be mindful when you're picking up the rose, right? So just the same thing with life. That's how life is. There might be you have beautiful rose bush and you look at it. It's like hmm. But, you know, my sister, brother, but don't forget, you can smell the rose, but make sure that you are allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you, okay? That is my prayer for you. So let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Father God, that you are using the chisel in our lives, Father God. So we give you permission, Father God, to take off the rough edges that you know that it's not of you, Father God. We give you permission to do that, Father God. Father God, if we have said or done anything, Father God, that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you will wash us and make us whiter than snow, Father God. And Father God, as you continue to give us the trials and the tribulation in our life, Father God, we thank you for our trials. We thank you for our tribulation because we know, Father God, that you have measured everything we're going through and you know that we can pass the test. Why? Because we are relying on you to take us through. 
So, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for hearing. We thank you for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, this is Birdell Warrior. Uh, follow me over Birdell, um, under Birdell Warrior on YouTube. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. So when my videos goes up there, you'll be the first to be notified. And make some comments there as well, my sister and brother, so that they on YouTube will know that, hey, you know what? This was a good message. Or I just had a question or you know, whatever, right? Just go ahead and make a comment, my sister Maria. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you and your family. And we know that today's preparation day and sunset is the Sabbath. So for those of you that's already celebrating the Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, my sister and brother, happy Sabbath. I tell you, there's nothing like the Sabbath. So as we continue to allow the Lord to use us, mold us, my sister and brother, you are almost there. So don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Have that smile in your, on your face. Have the smile in your heart because you know that your father is going to take you through because you say, Lord, I don't know what this day is going to be like. Lord, I don't know about this issue that I'm having. But Father God, you are my father. So I place it in your arms i place it in your arms my sister and brother and when you get up make sure that you know don't bring it don't pick it back up whatever you ask the lord to do don't don't start worrying and worrying and worrying because it's not it's, going, it's not going to benefit you it's not going to be actually it's going to make you more stressful and then to you also showing that you do not really trust the lord mm. Worrying is from the devil, my sister and brother. So stop worrying. I know we human beings because I find myself like that. And I got to talk to myself, girl, you better get it together. You know who your father is? That's how I talk to myself. I don't know how you talk to yourself, but that's how I talk to myself. You better pull yourself together. Your father got this. And then I just sit back and, you know, but still you got my, maybe got a few steps that you might have to do, maybe different things. You know, if you want a job, you can't just sit there and expect it to just fall in your lap. You got to make the phone calls or whatever. I'm just, that's just an example, right? So with that, my sister and brother, I love you. appreciate you. And Earl, thank you so much, my brother, for taking the time to watch my video. I really, really appreciate you and your family, you and your beautiful wife. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, my sister and brother, you guys have a super awesome day. Have a super awesome Sabbath. Have a super awesome weekend until Monday. Oh, you know what? I forgot the four hugs for survival. It's a four. We know four is for survival. Eight is for maintenance, and there's 12 hugs for growth. But we are going to do the four. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four. I love you, my sister and brother. I love you until Monday. Be blessed and take care.